Cope Farm. My name is Larry. I lived here with my mother and father, Mr. and Mrs. Adams, from 1947 to about 1968. This is Field House, which is what it used to look like, with the gardens and the orchard. We used to play here with our friends and have wonderful times. This is the row of 12 cottages where the farm workers and their families lived. Many of my friends lived in some of these houses. This is the view of the farm as it used to look before many of the buildings were demolished. I'm just pointing out Field House and the office and along here the granary with stables underneath, the tractor shed where we used to keep the lorry, the granary still going along here and this is where we used to store potatoes and this top bit of the granary is where we held the celebrations for the Queen's coronation. This is the old dairy shed and here is where all the fresh milk was taken. This section I knew as the calf pens. This section here was where the young pigs and sows lived and this is where the baby pigs were born along here. These are workshops here, blacksmiths, and joiners, painters and some outside yards leading to the stackyard. How many people would have been? Well Cyril Brooks told me when he first came here because he was born I think at Loudoun and when he first worked here there would be a hundred men clock on plus boys that did not want to school and things like that. <laughs> but then when they were allocated to jobs, they all had to troop off then. Yeah. The storeman used to, you know where you've got your spray store? Yeah. There was racks and racks and racks of all hand tools. Right. And it was all written down, you know, to be Mick Estrop, one muck for, you know. <laughs> and then, you, <laughs> you had to bring them back. But when you finished work at night and he ticked it off that he'd returned it back to the store in good order, not broken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's well, this is the mess room. Yeah. So we used to have parties yeah. and dances We've been in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It used to be a lovely yeah. big fireplace. Super fireplace. It used to be lovely. A lovely roaring fire for the kids, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 I can just imagine it. Imagine it. Yeah. 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 Big sink gate, wash your hands, yeah. sit down in front of the fire and have your snack. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, I mean, there weren't vans and land rovers to run about. Everybody who worked on a bus bike <laughs> they did. If they went off to the fields, they put, oh, yeah. put mud forks or hose all on the yeah. crossbar thing. Yeah. And two essential pieces of equipment was one of them big, long, black plastic mats and the black leggings. Right. And where to buy them was sold, they weren't provided. Yeah, Adams used to get them into it. Yeah. And it was like as if you were bringing you a present, wasn't it? Take that A turn. It was a problem. Yeah, we'll get it turned. Didn't it? Oh, yeah. It was a So, so we'll, we'll. This is a bowl. Oh, no, no, it's no, no. absolutely full of old records. Must be bottom, isn't it? Let's get. Uh, also, you've got where the um, hot soup was, that same area, isn't it? It's a large one, yes, it's a very yeah. large one. Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 yes, far in the far end of it. We're up in the granary, looking out across the farmyard. Now we're looking across the other side of the granary at the new dairy. Over there. No, and they used to rinse the bags of corn up yeah. and then 
and it could drop them down through the trap door to the stables below. Yeah. That was a. Uh, yeah. Well, that's just a call, a small coal organ. We used to stick that end into a pile of coal and that would load it into the trailer. So it's just an Archimedes screw. Yeah, it's got an over inside, hasn't it? Just push, 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 push. They used to store corn on either side of the passages and every day somebody used to come and turn the corn over to help it dry. Milk, rolling oats and barley for horse and cattle feed. And then this was one of the old um, corn grinders, which was stone grinders. It's two big, two big Sandstone. Machine there, that's a seed dresser. And this is a, this is a sack hoist. Oh, gosh, this, that's a that, good sturdy one, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. This is when the corn was in 19 stone sacks. Oh, God. And they used to, used to wind it up like that. And so you could get it on, so your, get it on your back. Oh, and men carried 19 stone wheat sacks. Oh. And that's what that was made for, to lift it up high enough so the man could carry it. Marvellous, isn't it? <laughs> Marvellous. They wouldn't let you carry 19 straight up there and come round. Hicking barra. Yeah. You could demo that to see if it come round. Yeah, you can get some real best, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. why not? <laughs> <laughs> you never get that. Fire over it, yeah. What are these? We're talking about the bells. That's um, where the uh, fire fittings were on there. Oh, right, yeah. Right. You know, all the hose connections and all that sort of thing. There's another lot further down. You know. You've got your bell, your emergency bell as well, no? Is that far from No, 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 no. no. That was just um, if anybody were working down here and the telephone. See, there, was only, there were only two telephones on the old farm. One was in a little green box downstairs and the other one was um, just on the wall up in the far end of the granary. No mobile phones or <laughs> pocket radios or anything. Yeah, there's a little, little office along there. Yeah. Yeah, the word. Now we're walking along the farthest end of the granary, right to the end where they had the stone Queen's coronation celebration. This one was the original hoist. which leads into the farmyard. These rooms were stacked up the sugar beet pole, yeah. in leather stone sacks, in the big Essian sacks. Yeah. Can you remember? Yeah. There were four big storage tanks built in between, a big set of weighing scales. Across the back there was all the new, new hammer mills then when they were milling and mixing all the uh, pig feed. And then over the time, they come and made us another feed hatch. feeder for the cows, we used to back the machine in, we'd put the silage in the, tr in the machine and then we used to back it into here and then we'd tip the bags of pulp and uh, roll barley and rolled oats on top of the silage and then away we went. That's before we had um, um, 
these complete diet feeders like that mix it all like the one they've got now. Um, that's how we could mix it, by putting it all on the top. And then as the machine unloaded it down to feed, to feed the cows, it would all mix itself together. Yeah, that's only been in there, what, Jim? 15 years? Yeah, it's not been in there that long. No. It's, what was it for? It was it's so that Fred, who worked here, it, it, there was a wooden steps and he could get, and he got a, a, a gangway then which looked down into the big um, corn tanks. Mind to say, it's not that long, it's 20 years since I left here. Yeah? Oh, sorry. <laughs> there used to be, there used to be a Claxton Hooter, um, and you when that Claxton Hooter was going, that there was corn going everywhere because an elevator had blocked up, yeah. and everybody would be running miles because they knew if they didn't <laughs> stop it, everybody would be there with a shovel. <laughs> that was the main thing, that was, where's the shovel? <laughs> this is the end bit of the granary and this is where we had the celebrations for the Queen's coronation and it was all whitewashed and decorated and there are still some photographs showing people enjoying themselves oh, now into the pulp uh, yard uh, Top Farm which is now gone there were a branch line from Collet Yard where they loaded bales of uh, oat straw and oats which they took out then to feed the army horses in the world, First World War. And when this farm was built, the idea was that the big archway was going to build a railway track through and through the back of the cottages and to connect on, then to bring feed in or export potatoes out again. We used to store potatoes in here. Used to store potatoes yeah. in this shed, yeah. 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 This is the new stockyard. Uh, the old stockyard had great big what we call Dutch barns and um, this hay and the straw was stored in here. There's uh, two rows of buildings here and uh, there's 18, 19 pens in, in the row, in each row. And this first, like, first uh, row of buildings, these were the farrowing pens for the pigs. They were all, they were all pig roofs. And uh, we got uh, large white pigs. They were all pedigree stock. And then after they'd finished, when they'd finished farrowing, they'd stay here for about 10 days. Then they'd move into the next lot of pens which were equipped with what we call creeps and uh, that was to allow the small pigs to go away from the south and get some food of their own and they would stay there for eight weeks and then they'd be weaned off and taken into a different store, different uh, pens altogether then the sows would go back outside to be Reserviced and uh, you know in pig again, and they, they would stay and they would be turned out into the fields. Um, other than that, I don't know what I could say to you. Can you tell me about the boars and the names? Uh, yeah, we used to have uh, about five boars and. They, they've got pedigree names as well. Uh, the King Davids, Field Marshals, and uh, Royal Warrant. Those are the three main names of boars. Um, we used to keep about five boars at a time. Um, and uh, when, when they uh, when the sows had been weaned, they were put into a, a box by themselves, or with two or three in a box. And then when they came on, came into season, they uh, they would go to the boar, and then turned out into the fields for for the until they were ready to give farrow again. Okay. Yeah. When the pigs were ready for sale, 
every Saturday, more or less, they went to Nottingham Cattle Market with Arthur Johnson for sale. That's right, yeah. Yeah. What um, age were they? they, they they'd be uh, anywhere between eight and ten weeks old. Okay. Because they were weaned between six and eight weeks, yeah. depending, often depended on the size of the growth of the pigs. Well, originally this was pig pens, and as I say, originally they, they were they were calf pens, where they reared the baby calves, because the, the calves only used to stay on the, with the cow for about 24 hours if it was lucky, and uh, then it was fed on uh, and fed with milk, and we used to have. To, rear the small pigs, they were farrowed outside on pens over there. Then the next row of pens were the, what we call the calf pens originally, but they were pig pens. Bring the sow and the litter into these pens and they stay here till they were about eight weeks old. And then they were separated from, the mother was separated from the babies and uh, they were then all put together, well not all together, but into bigger bunches up to about 20 or 30 and then they'd go to market, it, nothing on market and sold on from there and then uh, people used to rear them onto bacon from there. Well sometimes, it all depends, I mean when you've got things like foot and mouth and mouth, That's right. that sort of thing. And you were very nothing often, went off the farm, did it? Then nothing used to go off the farm. You no. couldn't you couldn't sell anything. So what used to happen? All these pens used to get full up with pigs, yeah. and uh, you got no option but to keep them on till they were eight, ten, twelve weeks old. Yes, yeah. they're getting nearly ready for pork. Then. Yeah. Hey. This is the back or the the feeding passage for the boat, for the pigs or any other animals that are in here. <coughs> the, first, the first five you'll see have got iron bars on and they were all for ball pigs. Yeah, yeah the, the, you know, they, they, they used to knock these doors off. They, the first time I put some bars in here, they knocked, a, they knocked the door off and I found two boys fighting in this passageway. Yeah. And they got cuts all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. It took, I don't know how many tubes of penicillin I yeah. used, about half a dozen tubes of penicillin to go down the gashes they got. And they got gashes about this long yeah. and about that deep. And that yeah. was their teeth? From the yeah. tusks. Yeah. Tusks. Because yeah. yeah. they've got some pretty fair tusks of boys. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Okay. That, uh, The old dairy where all the milk collected was cooled and put into churns. You see the tracks, they're what remain of where the trailer used to go down towards the old cow sheds. We used to play on the trailer when we were little. The old cow sheds were, if anybody can refer to the photographs. You know, yeah. back at the yeah, uh, at Burton Joyce there. Um, yeah, they were quite a thing, weren't they, Jim? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, they were quite a building. They, 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 they went from here right up to the up to the pulp house. Yeah, the pulp house building. There was only just a, a roadway between the buildings. Yeah, uh, enough to get a horse and cart through in those days. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there were there were two separate buildings. Yeah. They, they, they were as long as this building. Yeah, they mirrored one another, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. yeah. And uh, there was one. Fifty-two cows in each shed. Yes. Mm. They bred three and four then. Yeah. yeah. So that would just be a brief mention that this is where the... Yes, the on the roof there, it's been yeah. it was raw time, wasn't it? But they could drive a tractor and trailer through this one, you see. Yes. This was stop the, stop the cowmen getting wet. When you were wheeling the church of milk? Yes, 
they weren't used to this being yeah. outside and they were looking at it. Oh dear. <laughs> and then they do. Each the pigs used to come out, because they were fed on dry feed, the pigs then had all got their own individual water bottles. So how old were the pigs when they were in here? About eight weeks? Yeah, eight to ten weeks before they'd come across to this shed. Yeah. 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 This is where they kept the pigs before market. And next door is where they kept the cart horses. I can't get in there today, but we had three cart horses that I can remember. One was a black one called Nancy. There was another one called Duke. And then they brought one from Stoke Bardo. And I think he was called Punch or Puck. But they used to be in the stable next door. Mm -hmm. Going along there, you can see the marks where it used to be. And just to the left of this door, there was um, a fuel pump for the tractors and a telephone box for communication around the farm. And inside here, they kept the farm lorry, which was driven by Ted Knight. When I first yeah. took over as head cowman, I had 42 cows in the top shed, because the bottom shed was then uh, full of Jim's uh, sows and pigs. And I had one calf in stable one. And when I retired, there was 618 head of cattle on the books. Do you remember how much milk you produced when you had 42, mate? Right? Hey, I can remember. I can remember. Because um, Herbert used to milk with me in them days, didn't you? Yeah. Herbert Bradford. But if we used to hit supplying, from that top shed, 200 gallons a day on my birthday, which was the 13th of January. And we seemed to hit it because of the, how the carving pattern was, you know, yeah. that would hit 200 gallons. That would be 20 churns of milk, 20 churns of milk from the, just that one top shed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. yeah. The milk comes down. Yeah. And, and, and the um, they used yeah. to have the chicklings, <laughs> the chick, the chicklings, the chicklings. All of these semi you know, the first milk. Milk. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, I used to save it. If anybody wanted it, they'd yeah. got to ask me, or yeah. they'd be saying, have you got a cow coming up for carving? And they'd want um, the bee stings. Yeah, bee stings. You know, to make the um, yeah. bee stings custard. Yes, yeah, yeah. I know marvelous. we had it sometimes. Yeah, sometimes marvellous. Yeah. With nutmeg on the top. Yeah. <laughs> And we're here I can talk about the mother day farming, uh, what we do today and the volume of milk we produce, we do 2.7 million litres now a year, 7,500 litres a day, which is like a lorry load. We've got 600 and odd animals, which is similar to when Mick left, when Mick started, there was only 42 in a car. Um, we produce 2,000 tonne of wheat and uh, 1,000 tonne of horse feed. I've been for a fasting blood test. Jim, Mary, and, uh, Mary the staff now is uh, there's eight full time staff, along with myself and two girls in the office. In, in Mick's day, we talked about earlier uh, about 100 people. Uh, we're in that mess room, so that's our time. That's right as well. Everything's run by machinery and fuel these days. You can't be these are about three months old calves and now we're moving over to the modern dairy. We're looking at the bull, through the bull bars. And that's the Aberdeen Angus bull. They call him Billy. Here's the cows coming for milking. Freezing cows. We want to uh, examine their um, ear tags or we want to uh, put a ring through the nose, that sort of thing. Um, the bull will put his um, head through there or cow and we'll it's called a headlock and then he, he can't pull his head out there and we can work on its head or examine its teeth or whatever sort of thing and when you finish start that he'll pull his head out again it's a head restraint here he is it's front left it's um it's on about, escort yeah it was on about um, eight weeks rest because it did it's half the milk cows are in here here's a gang three and four that's the feed area on the left hand side this is obviously the bedded area they're in uh, they won't actually be in here when we're taking people around, it'll be empty. And if they're, if they're uh, something 
These are waiting to see the vet. They've got something wrong with them. The vet's coming in about 20 minutes. We get can ounce of yield and the feed they're on. That's the feed made above maize, silage, soya, rape, minerals, limestone, flour, salt, molasses, all this stuff, whatever. And um, we've got to ask them to do some particular feeds, such a breeding program. You don't have a, have a machine, don't you, that comes and chops all the stuff up? The straw? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the straw chopper, uh, the fed by machine. Where does that come from? Uh, it's mobile, it goes all over the place. Yeah, yeah. It originates from Anglia, I think. Does it? Yeah. Does, yeah. I, I just see it come ever so often, and it yeah. seems to... And the bedding is done by machine. Yeah, yeah. Everything's done by machine. Yeah. In terms of modern day farming and recording, um, the computer can play plays a big role um, and it was a thing we brought into the dairy about 12 years ago and has actually made a tremendous difference to the yields of cows because you know exactly what any cow is doing for you. Um, it's complete history um, in terms of family history so when you're selecting in terms of breeding you're, you're um, breeding from the, your, your best productive cows so the computer system has uh, revolutionised dairy probably in the last 15 years. Uh, this tank holds 8,000 litres, we do about 7,500 litres, that's, there's about 18,000 pints, is that? And that's collected every lunchtime. It's cooled from the temperature of the cow, which is about 32 degrees, down to 3 degrees in about 2 minutes, and it has to be for a high degree. Plant down, the noise you can hear at the moment is the, the washing of the plant, it's all automatic, just like your washing machine, when you finish milking, you plug the units in, press the button, Go off and do some other work, it's all automatic. This is the milk and pollen in here. The milk and pollen, we uh, 20 cows here at any one time, 10 cows each side. One man milks, uh, is just down here on his own. We start at half five in the morning and finish about 10 o'clock, and then start again at two, two and a half past two in the afternoon. Um, each cow in here can produce up to 50 litres during twice a day, so 30, 20, something like that. There's an individual box which tells you how much milk each cow is producing. Um, the cows come in here quite happily because A, they're used to it every day and they do it twice a day. Secondly, it's probably a nice sensation for them as well, being released in the milk. And, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a quite a repetitive job. It gives you a good chance for every cow to inspect it, be inspected each day in terms of its feet and uh, its health and it comes through because one of the first things to drop off when a cow is sick is milk. You can tell by the individual boxes and how much milk is producing. The cows come into the back, the, the, uh, they come forward, um, they walk in on their own, ten at a time, and when they're finished they come out and put them in. In the old days, obviously, we used bulls to uh, either the bull would actually serve the cow or you would collect semen off a bull um, and artificially inseminate it. But now, uh, with in the modern day, we um, buy in semen from all over the world. This the semen, what we have here, probably originates from America or New Zealand. And uh, we buy this in, these straws of semen. There's three guys on here who are trained in artificial insemination techniques and their results are monitored. If you look in here, the straws of semen are stored in liquid nitrogen in mm -hmm. here and frozen. And that, that represent, that's a straw of semen, it tells exactly what, what it is on it, what its bullet came from. Um, and if you've got a bull which uh, people want to breed from, obviously it's a very, very valuable bull. This is the, um, the uh, catheter which we use for artificial insemination. When the guys um, uh, put these straws of semen in the cows, they have to get it in exactly the right place, which is the bottom of the two uterine horns, because you don't know if the eggs are going to come down the left horn or the right horn within the cow, so you place the semen at the bottom of the two uterine horns. And obviously when I've got about a 50% chance of conception, and even if it does conceive, I've got a 50-50 chance of being a male or female. And what I really want is a black and white female, because she is the future of the herd, we will rear her on and she will become a cow into the dairy unit. So um, that's why we buy these um, straws in from um, three different companies 
from throughout the world to try and improve the quality of our cows in terms of yield, butter, fat, protein percentage, um, its susceptibility to lameness, mastitis, etc., etc., and all massive breeding traits and, um, and that sort of thing. So uh, you may um, read the Daily Mail, I read Seaman World sometimes, see which portal I'm going to take. <laughs>